The Giants' deal with Jordan Hicks is officially official, and the, uh, I think he perfectly illustrates or exemplifies the Giants' offseason, which is that it's not exactly what people wanted, you know, Shohei Otani, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, but it's different than pa- than past offseasons, and there's a lot of upside baked in, including with Hicks himself. You are locked on Giants. Your daily San Francisco Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide episodes three days a week for now, back to five when pitchers and catchers report, and oh, by the way, less than a month, that snuck up on us, and it's crazy how the offseason is kind of sort of almost over, but there's a huge number of free agents still out there. Anyway, we're talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple passionate and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, so check us out there if you have not already, and please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you happen to be following the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com lock, uh, slash locked on to get started. And where we get started is discussing uh, the the Jordan Hicks signing being official and, and how I just thought that he perfectly kind of represents um, the the Giants offseason in a way because they have made I would say I would say that the last couple off seasons were very disappointing. And I feel like people are kind of lumping this offseason in with those last couple of offseasons, but I wouldn't do that. And I don't think it's over. As I said, they uh, th- there are a ton of free agents that remain out there, including free agents that look like fits for the Giants, including, you know, I, th- I believe there's like four guys who are likely to command at least roughly $100 million or more in the form of two position players, Matt Chapman and Cody Bellinger, both of whom make varying degrees of sense for the Giants, and then two starting pitchers in Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. And you can make a case, too, that Josh Hader is in that tier where he could crack $100 million as well. But Jordan Hicks, let me just like talk about him for a minute because that's the last episode we did was when he signed. Um and finally today, almost a week later, his uh, deal becomes official. And so it's super interesting, of course, that they have signed him to be a starter. And if you watch like the, uh, you know, they put out some media of Farhan Zaidi and Hicks and Bob Melvin sitting around and kind of talking about the signing and whatnot. And there was like no doubt that they're committed to Jordan Hicks being a starting pitcher. And so it's fraught with risk. I say that in some ways, like it's not because if it doesn't work out, he's he had an excellent season out of the bullpen. Like this deal is right in line with industry expectations. Four years, forty four million uh, for what he was going to get as a high leverage back end reliever. And so it's not like they're paying more really to have him be a starter. There are some. Uh, performance incentives like based on innings but it's only two million a year and that's only if he reaches certain numbers of innings and then you know he has to go all the way up towards 200 to get that full two million dollars and so anyway that deal being official the question you know will they add more starting pitching is a big question because uh when I say it's fraught with risk, what I'm talking about is say it doesn't work out and like he struggles as a starting pitcher. Um, but this isn't your this isn't like a Ross Stripling situation. It's not a kind of low ceiling, high floor as we would have thought. You know, with Stripling, it turned out Stripling had a lower floor. Like Stripling had 
one of the worst years he could have possibly had. But with Hicks, there's just a ton of upside. There's a ton of upside. And I've, I've seen that with their other moves. Like with Robbie Ray, again, there's risk in that he's coming off Tommy John surgery and he's not due back until the middle of the season. Alex Cobb, uh, via Susan Slusser of the Chronicle, he says he feels like he's on track to definitely come back at some point in the first half. But we're talking about a guy coming off Tommy John won't be available until around the second half, like after the All-Star break-ish in Robbie Ray. We're talking about uh, Cobb, who's going to miss time for sure. And we're talking about Jordan Hicks, who is he, he's got eight starts at the major league level in his career and he started out in the big leagues in 2018 and he's got eight starts and so if you're relying on him to be a starting pitcher I like the upside like this guy throws 105 miles an hour like he has been known to throw 105 miles an hour he added a new pitch a sweeper it's kind of a new pitch in general um, in in kind of baseball terminology but it's it's essentially like the Romo slider was a sweeper. It's more like just straight horizontal rather than like vertical. And Hicks now throws that pitch. And he also was talking in this interview about throwing the four seam fastball more and that he kind of incorporated it more last year and it really helped him out. And the numbers back it up. I mean, he had a 329 ERA, 330 expected ERA, so almost identical. 3-2-2 fielding independent pitching. So everything aligning and saying this guy was worth about 3.3 runs per nine innings, which is excellent. And strikeout rate was good. So uh, ground ball rate is off the charts good. And so it's there's upside. It's not a, like a Ross Stripling signing. And hence the four-year commitment. He's also young. He's only 27. But like I said, the question is, are they done adding starting pitching? And I thought it was interesting. I don't think it was Maria Guardado who normally covers the Giants for sfgiants.com, but instead Sonia Chen, I guess, filling in. And she said that basically the Giants may be done. Um, yeah, quote, the Giants may be done adding to the rotation now that Hicks has joined the group, which includes ace Logan Webb, top prospect Kyle Harrison and Keaton Wynn. Zaidi named Ross Stripling as a possibility for the fifth spot and I don't know. I mean, that is just so much uncertainty. You're talking about Kyle Harrison, Keaton Wynn, uh, an unproven in the rotation, Jordan Hicks, and then Ross Stripling to go along with Webb. Like, imagine if Webb got hurt, then it's just complete unknowns across the board. And yes, you have Ray and you have um, Cobb coming back. So it's just, it's just to me, a it's been a really interesting offseason so far. I don't think they're done. I, like, I, I would not rule them out of the market for a Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery. But at this point, I kind of feel like a position player is more likely. And given like their commitment to, to these ground ball guys, and Keaton Wynn, by the way, another ground ball guy. Like I said, Hicks is an extreme ground ball pitcher. Webb, one of the best in the game at inducing ground balls. So is Alex Cobb. It's like... The stars align in a lot of ways for Matt Chapman, and I've gone through the the potential red flags with a Matt Chapman. I have. I'm not going to do that today, but you know, if you don't add more starting pitching, certainly I hope they turn to that position player market. And I do think, like, if you were to bring in a Matt Chapman, and if you were to bring in a, a kind of backup plan to Marco Luciano, someone who's really really good defensively at shortstop then you can I mean Matt Chapman is just so good over there at third and then I, it's just easy for me to imagine the Giants um, just with really good infield defense and a really heavy ground ball pitching staff and having that work well in terms of run prevention that doesn't score you any runs but a run not scored by the opponent is the same as a run scored by you in essence. And so anyway, coming up in just a minute, we will wrap up that conversation. But I also want to discuss something we haven't had a chance to get to, which is the Giants avoiding arbitration with three different players. They've settled on salaries. What does that mean? And then there's one player they didn't settle with. What does that mean? That's particularly interesting. So we're going to get we're going to get into that 
whole conversation in just a minute. And before we do, today's episode is brought to you by our good friends over at Ibotta. The new year for many people, myself included, means kind of checking in on the budget and ultimately having a resolution to save money. And so uh, stop shopping without getting anything in return. Start getting cash back on everything you make, every, every, every purchase you make, excuse me, with Ibotta. After the holidays, we could all use a little extra cash in our pockets, right? That's part of the reason we turn to these resolutions is that we spend a lot around the holidays, especially after all the gift giving. We still need to buy the everyday things we need. So make sure you're getting cash back on all of your everyday purchases with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from grocery to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $145 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip Buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you've been dying to go to. Hey, maybe, well, 145 might not get you to the the Niners game, but it'll chip in, you know, or that fancy dinner you've been craving. So right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. We spend a lot of time talking together, you and I. We get fired up on wins and losses. We get fired up on off-season signings and disappointments. And I'm thankful for that connection we have. And today I want our chat to be a little bit more personal, however. Whether you're on extended travel, which I recently just did, Bracing for a major weather event, which thankfully here we don't deal with as much, or limited by yet another supply shortage, you are covered, my friend. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily meds can be ordered in a one-year supply. Even ED generics for Cialis, Viagra, and Reviato prescriptions. Right now, go to jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code locked on at checkout for a discount as well. Remember to use promo code locked on for $20 off your purchase. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. All right, as promised, we are going to get into the Giants avoiding arbitration with several players. Now, all but one. I think they had like six or seven uh, arbitration-eligible players, and one remains unsettled. What does that mean, and why is it unsettled? It's It's not necessarily a good thing, but it's also not the end of the world. And there's always, I think, a lot of confusion about this confusing process. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day, everydayers. We've got a lot more to get to. We've got uh, a bunch of mailbag questions. We've got um, more about the uh, Giants offseason as a whole as we get closer to the start of spring training. We're less than a month away from pitchers and catchers reporting, which is crazy. It's kind of gone by, and so something's got to give, right? And so... Anyway, we've got a lot that we're kind of sitting on here, and I want to get into the like, where do the Giants, how would I grade out this offseason so far for the Giants? It's kind of an incomplete, but also, I, like I said, I like a lot of the upside moves that they've made. So, also, by the way, uh, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So, like I said, I want to get more into the the rest of the offseason and why I 
think they're not done, hope they're not done, talk about the luxury tax and the penalties that go along with the luxury tax. And if I see the Giants going there, they're actually, last I checked, 10th in luxury tax payroll. I want to discuss the difference between luxury tax payroll and kind of other payroll, because you might see different numbers cited, uh, and it's a little bit confusing, but I want to explain that to you. So anyway, that's all coming up later. But in terms of these arbitration eligible players, the Giants had six, Austin Slater, Mike Yastrzemski, Lamont Wade Jr., Tyler Rogers, and Tyro Estrada were eligible for arbitration this year. And basically what that means is like, in essence, when you get a player who's like a rookie, say Patrick Bailey, they get three years of service time where they are only owed the league minimum salary. And then their next three years of service time, they're eligible for arbitration. And arbitration salaries are based on precedent. And it's based on what year you are in your arbitration process. If you're year one, you're going to make less than you are in year three. That's just how it goes. So, you know, if you're even if you're the best player in the game and you're entering year one of arbitration you're not going to be paid like the best player of the game it's just how the process works so um the giants had the choice back in like november whether to tender contracts or not to all their arbitration eligible players i can't i don't think they non-tendered anyone too significant so um they ended up tendering contracts which means basically formally agreeing that at some point they were going to settle on a salary with these guys. They avoided arbitration and like reached one year deals with Austin Slater and Mike Yastrzemski at that time. By that tender deadline, non-tender deadline, Yastrzemski is going to earn $7.9 million in 2024. I think a lot of people listening hear that number and they're probably immediately like, why did they do that? That's too much. Yastrzemski stinks. Or something, but Yastrzemski's basically been like an average to a slightly above average player, and the going rate for average players is much higher than seven point nine million dollars a year. So this is kind of a no brainer, even though it might. I mean, it's a lot of money, obviously, to normal people, but to baseball teams, that's a bargain for what Yastrzemski provides. And for Slater, four million for what he provides is also a uh, very solid value. And so those were like kind of no brainer decisions Slater by the way this is his last year under contract uh, he is a free agent at the end of 2024 one of the best role players in the game is Austin Slater in my opinion uh, just crushes left-handed pitching Yastrzemski has one more year of arbitration eligibility remaining so anyway they were going into this deadline that was a few days ago uh, they it, it basically was the deadline for teams and players to exchange figures for if they do go to an arbitration hearing. And the Giants have a file and trial policy under this new regime. They didn't used to have this policy. Most teams have this policy. And it's basically like to give the team some kind of leverage to basically set a deadline. Like we have to agree to a salary for you by this deadline. Otherwise, we're going to to a trial, you know, to an arbitration hearing. And so it works as an incentive to get a deal done for both sides because there's risk for the player, there's risk for the team, because basically they file, if they don't settle, by this deadline that just recently passed, the player files a figure that they say, this is what my salary should be in 2024. The team counters with a figure that is always higher, or excuse me, lower. They think the player should be paid less than uh, what the player thinks they should be paid. That's why they haven't reached a deal because there there's a separation between what they you know what the two sides want. And so anyway, all but one of these cases got settled for the Giants, thus avoiding arbitration. So the Giants came to a 4.7 million dollar agreement with Tyro Estrada, who still has two more years of team control after this year. So. He was one of these special cases where he got four years of arbitration. Remember I said three years pre-arbitration, three years of arbitration. Well, if you are in a select group of players who 
have among the most service time among those between two and three years, you actually get an extra year of arbitration. It's called a Super 2, and he was one of them. Yastrzemski was one of them as well. So it's great for the player when that happens. So ha- I was happy for Yaz at the time. I'm very happy for Estrada. means you make more money. So Estrada is getting $4.7 million with two more years to go before reaching free agency. So nice uh, pay increase for Estrada. But again, it's not his market value. That's not how this works. It is not about market value at all. It's about precedent and it's suppressed versus market value. Anyway, they also avoided arbitration with Tyler Rogers, $3.2 million. Again, total bargain. Uh, this guy would make a lot more than that if he was available on a one-year deal on the open market. And with Lamont Wade, $3.5 million, same deal. Like, you're, If he was available to all teams and it was a one-year deal, he would get a lot more than $3.5 million. And so that just leaves one player, J.D. Davis, who is unsettled. What does this mean? Well, the Giants... I mean, I don't know that they've flat out said it, but this is only, I think, the second time under this regime where they have not come to uh, to an agreement by this filing deadline. And the only other time was with Donovan Solano, as far as I can recall. And what that meant was they did, in fact, go to an arbitration hearing. And the reason this matters is because It's not like, oh, they might not have J.D. Davis next year. It's not about that at all. In fact, we know that they will have him. It's just about what is his salary going to be. But more importantly than that is they're going to go and argue in front of a panel basically with the Giants saying, this is why he's not worth what he thinks he's worth. And it's never a good process when it's your own player and you're sitting there like literally showing clips of him swinging and missing through fastballs like he did all of the second half of the season. You're showing clips of his old defensive issues that he had before this year when actually he was pretty good defensively. Um, you're, you're citing his strikeout rate. You're citing his contact rates. And you're just like basically and, and all of this over a few hundred thousand dollars. So it never makes much sense to me. But also... You can say, like, the player knows the team has the file and trial policy, so if they can't get a deal done, it's like half on the player, too. You know, the player also wasn't willing to compromise or whatever. So anyway, J.D. Davis filed for $6.9 million. The Giants filed for, I think, $6.55 million. So it's really kind of dumb that they are going to go to an arbitration hearing over this kind of difference in salary especially when he's a free agent after this season so it's not like it sets up because if you make more in like year one of three in arbitration and you're like far apart by like a million dollars it it then sets you up to it's going to increase your whole earnings throughout arbitration but this is the last year of arbitration for jd davis so for him he's fighting for kind of setting his market going into free agency and the Giants for whatever reason I mean it's because they you know file and trial 6.55 million versus 6.9 million that's a difference of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and they're gonna go fight about it at a hearing unless they just like break their file and and trial policy but regardless JD Davis you know, this means he's back. It's just that they haven't picked the salary. And it means that they go through this stupid process where they're going to fight about it. And the Giants are going to, you know, humiliate him in front of a panel or just disparage him and talk about why he's not worth. And they did with did this with Donovan Solano and the Giants won their case for what it's worth. They won their case. But at the same time, it's like, was it worth it? It's not my money. So I say no. But There you have it. Anyway, coming up in just a minute, Dusty Baker, the man himself, the legendary former manager of the Giants. Guess what? He is back with the San Francisco Giants. We're going to talk about his role and what it means to have Dusty Baker back in black and orange officially in, you know, a real capacity. So we will get into that in just a minute. And before we do, today's episode is brought to you by our very good friends over at FanDuel. Right now, the NFL season is 
in playoff mode. We're wrapping it up. But there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. And so if you want to just put a little action on, hey, oh, the, I hear there's a big upcoming game with the, uh, what do you call them, San Francisco 49ers uh, coming up on Saturday. Niners favorites, minus 450 on the money line uh, with the point spread at minus nine and a half. They're huge favorites here. But, you know, bet on any game you want here. And it's a $5 bet. And win or lose, you get 150 in bonus bets. If you So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use as you would expect and there's many different ways to bet like same uh, live same game parlays and so much more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on again fanduel.com slash locked on and just make that first bet a layup. FanDuel official partner of the NFL. All right as promised we are going to discuss Dusty Baker rejoining the San Francisco Giants. This was the manager of my youth when I first became a fan of this team, Dusty Baker was the manager, and I, and I have so many positive memories, like um, going, you know, going to Candlestick, some, but also going to the early days of Oracle Park, and you know, the, those Bonds home run chases, and also the playoff teams and the World Series team, and 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 how Dusty Baker was a huge part of that, so popular. Here, I think a lot of people were really happy when he finally won that World Series ring, even though it was with the Astros. Like, that's how popular he is. You know, I think a lot of people don't like the Astros, yet to see Dusty Baker get a ring, finally, he hadn't had one despite so many games managed in his career. Everybody was happy for Dusty Baker, and now he's back. And so, this is an official press release. I'm just going to read through it. Um, Giants put this out today because it became official today. The San Francisco Giants today announced that former manager Dusty Baker will return to the organization as a special advisor to baseball operations and will perform duties both on the baseball and business side. Quote, we are so excited to welcome Dusty back to the Giants organization, end quote, said Giants president and CEO Larry Bear. Quote, Dusty's experience, knowledge, and the success he's had in his 50 years of baseball will be an invaluable piece to the success and continued development of our baseball operations efforts, both on and off the field, end quote. Actually, yeah, end quote. So now it's Farhan Zaidi speaking. Quote, I was fortunate enough to get to know Dusty when we overlapped in the organization in 2019, and I'm excited to work with him again, said Giants president of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi. Quote, we've had a chance to meet in person and discuss our shared vision of bringing championship baseball back to San Francisco. I learned something new in every interaction with him and look forward to leaning on his experience and perspective on the game, said Bob Melvin. Quote, I'm thrilled to be on the same team as Dusty again. He's been a great friend and mentor to me over the years, more than anything I don't uh, have to manage against him anymore. Welcome home, Bake. Dusty Baker had to say this. Quote, I've enjoyed my stops at various places, but I'm happy to be back home. I look forward to providing guidance to the organization and helping the Giants get back to the top in a very tough tough division. And then it just says, uh, Baker will join the Giants and KNBR Fan Fest Tour for the first stop in Sacramento this Saturday, January 20th. Uh which is in uh, at the home of the Rivercats, Sutter Health Park. And so it just goes on and on and on about his uh, accolades. And yeah, that his coaching career started as a first base coach for the Giants in 1988, spent the following four years as the hitting coach before being named manager in 1993. In his very first year as manager, he won uh, manager of the year, leading the team to a 103 and 59 record which was the second best record in baseball Divi- division titles in 97 2000 NL West pennant in 2002 so 
and he currently resides in Sacramento. And so like he really it really is a homecoming for Dusty Baker. And so anyway, I just personally couldn't be more uh, thrilled for, you know, just to have Dusty Baker back in the Giants organization. I hope that he really does have a say and, and you know, the, the Giants have made a tilt back towards the middle, I think, like with the firing of Gabe Kapler, the hiring of, of Bob Melvin and bringing in someone like Dusty Baker. It's, it's not so much that he's going to like take over baseball operations and be making all the calls, but at the same time, Sounds like legitimately they want him to be involved. And I think that's a good thing. I think they tilted. It's like kind of reminds me of politics, unfortunately, but like extremes. And I think they went from like one extreme in a sense to the other with the Bochi regime and his coaches and just the way they kind of went about things to Farhan Zaidi, Gabe Kapler. But I do believe that there's a blend to be made here and that Farhan Zaidi can operate well within this blend. And so obviously I believe Dusty Baker can too, like he did in Houston, right? Houston kind of known very forward thinking and, and he thrived there as a manager. Um, and so anyway, just couldn't be more thrilled and, and just hope that he really does, you know, that he's involved and that he's around. He's just, they need more of that, and they're they're trending in that direction. And so I just I kind of like the direction the Giants are heading with with a lot of this kind of tilting back a little bit more towards the middle versus the extreme on like the analytics and just kind of uh, cutting edge, like just a little bit more traditional, a little bit more. You know, the coaching staff reflects that too. It's not just Bob Melvin, but some of the coaches they brought in kind of bring them back towards the middle a little bit. So anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day, everydayers. Uh, coming up tomorrow, I want to get into the rest of just kind of looking at what the Giants have done this offseason and determining what the next step is and talk about that luxury tax and why, you know, people call it a cap, but it's not a cap. So there's a lot, of, a lot to get into basically of where the Giants are what they've done and what there is to do and what kind of money there is to spend going forward as we're near spring, but there's still a lot of players out there. So it's a very interesting dynamic. Once again, my name's Ben Kaspik. Check me out on X at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot. So thank you in advance and thanks to everyone who's done so already. Can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.